Yo guys, you are tuned in to the Cosmicoria Friday broadcast. My name is Nate, and I already see some homies. Atoshi, what's happening? Acorns, yay, Jess, what's up? Den, rocks. How's it going, guys? It's Friday. Oh, Matt's here with us. Random Rockers here with us. Daryl. It's going to be a party. Uh, today I got so much stuff to cover, it's insane. Um, and yet at the same time, I'm probably going to, um, yeah, I just don't, there's just so much stuff to do. There's just so much stuff to do. I figured I'd start off, I'd show you guys, of course, what I've been working on. That's very important, just so you know that I'm not uh, resting on my laurels. It's a laurel anyway. It's like some part of some sort of a It's a laurel. It sounds like a I don't know. I just don't know. Nor do I care. What have I been working on? Eggs. You guys know about the pets? You know there's pets in the game. I've uh, been adjusting the the whole egg situation so that when you when you go to pick up an egg, you can actually choose to eat it or not, um, if you choose to eat it. And I'm assuming people who haven't played the game before, who don't really know uh, that there's, uh, you know, they don't know that there's pets hidden inside the egg. Ace of Fire, how's it going, homie? Um, if you don't know that there's pets inside the egg, you'll just think it's an egg. You eat the egg, it refills some health, and you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Right on. Maybe I can save it for later. So the next time they find an egg in a game, uh, they hold on to it and they don't actually, they don't eat it. Then they can carry it, and then they put it on a planet, and then they're filling the planet. And they're like, hey, the egg, the pattern matches the planet. Oh, I'm just going to let set it down here while I fight some enemies and plant. And then it hatches, and then there's a pet inside, and it blows their mind, and everyone has a good time and then they're like then they start to feel a little bit guilty and remorseful about the, the four other eggs that they ate before that so yeah eating eggs good stuff yeah I'm um, I'm a little stuffed up I think I've been stuffed up all summer long I got I'm allergic to like the world itself so if my my nasally voice and all that is throwing you guys off sorry usually I Usually I blow my nose for a straight two hours before I start the stream, but today I just decided to get in, get into it. Man, oh man. What else have I done? So eating eggs. Uh, there's now some different tower types. I should just show you. You know, what am I doing talking with a, with a graphic on the screen? I should just, I should just show you this shit. That's the real ticket. That's the real meal ticket. Mm, oh, let's do this little cam twist action. We're going to do a full screen. You guys can see my. Today we're going to be listening to the damn freak noise funk with the uh, album entitled "Take Off the Hot Sweater." Take off the hot sweater. I don't know what. Uh, not even wearing one. Okay, so we got uh, Cosmicoria. Let's do this. I'll show you guys some stuff. Um, Dan's asking me if I forgot about my husband. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to acknowledge the whole nonsense that happened last week. It just the stream like degenerated into like a it's like a psychedelic like after party of of just crazy good times okay check this out so i crouched down and uh now we got some more menu options i think um it's actually kind of funny because after i did the stream last week dare i totally said i totally said hey daryl dare huge hugs extra hugs um, 
yeah, after I did the stream last week, I was actually working on Saturday, and I decided to just stream stream what I was doing on Saturday as well. So it ended up kind of cool because I think I got more done on Saturday than I was really uh, than I really did on on the Friday, which is funny. Um, one of the things I was getting done was um, additional menu options, um, and that's basically what we're seeing here when I push down. Right now I'm just using some placeholder graphics for the actual towers themselves and also for the buttons of the towers, but I do have some ideas in mind for what these towers are going to do. Um, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a tower that creates sort of like a shield thing. Um, right now it's just this green this green thing. It does a, I think they all do the, the same thing. You know, they're all I don't have I haven't programmed the towers yet. But I've got these placeholder holders so that I can actually set all this stuff up. So it's going to be the green tower. It's going to be like a like a shield kind of thing. It can protect you with bullet, protect you from bullets. Um, the red tower. This is going to be like a ground earthquake, ground flare type thing. It's going to shoot out fireballs that travel along the ground, and the fireballs, of course, demolish the dudes. So it's sort of like a way to attack uh, the ground guys. This is your usual yellow tower that we're all we all know very well. Um, and then the last tower, which we're used to being the seed tower. Uh, this is the one that you, you use seeds for to to sprout. And you may end up I may end up making it so that you need to use seeds for some of, or one of the other towers as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know what that's going to do either. And they're not going to look, they're not all going to look like this. Um, each tower is going to have its own unique look. This is just for me, you know, just to differentiate when I'm, when I'm testing and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, one of the next things I'll be doing in terms of the towers is actually um, setting it up so that they each do something different. And then that'll be pretty cool. Because then uh, the towers, I think they're also going to have, they're going to be unlockable. You don't start with all four. Um, so you'll actually have to, um, you know, go into, you know, purchase them or find find a guy somewhere and actually unlock the tower before you can use it. And uh, let's see some of the ideas that we got here. Eggs, are <laughs> eggs are my favorite food. No, they're pretty good. I like eggs on salads and stuff. So here we go. Picked up an egg. Eat it. Yes or no? I'm going to say no. And now I can carry the egg around. Um, or if I pick it up. You picked up the egg, eat it, and I'm going to say, yes, I am going to eat this egg. And it, of course, it didn't work. So, in true form, for the live stream, we, I've got a bug right off the bat. Another cool thing that I uh, did was I made it so you can use your bombs wherever. Um, right now, it's uh, it used to be where you couldn't crouch down if you're overlapping something uh, like a tower or a plant. Um, it wouldn't let you crouch down at all, but now you can crouch down anywhere. So um, if your planet is, you know, jack full of, of good stuff like plants and towers and stuff, uh, you can still find a spot that's got something on it, and you can still crouch down and use your bomb. And the bombs are still also going to um, they're going to destroy the towers, so that you can pick uh, pick them up and carry them to another planet so you can uh, you know move your defenses around with you if you want um, I might not even do that now though now that I think of it because no I do I do need a way to disassemble the towers I was thinking of um, having it so you can actually just overlap in one tower you just dis disassemble the one tower but um, I don't know we'll see how it goes um, we've got some cool ideas, so I'm going to read the chat for a second. Uh, let's see. I, I always thought you needed a pyramid to attack ground units. No, uh, Dara, my original plan was the, the whole um, ground unit thing. Um, a very good strategy for the game is jumping, and um, I think it's surprising that that technique can go sort of mistaken or go undiscovered. Um, how many people I've seen playing on like live streams and stuff like that that don't jump very often they're just sort of like walking around on the planet and you know getting frustrated because the angle of the planet is not letting them um, shoot of course because the planet's curved and you know you, you can't really if there's an enemy just slightly out of view it's gonna be pain in the ass but if you jump you immediately increase your um, you immediately increase your 
your angle, right? The angle of attack or whatever. So you can, uh, yeah, you, you the, the real key and the reason why your jetpack refuels on the planet is, uh, yeah, you gotta be gangster with the, the jumping and the attacking and the, you gotta learn that technique. And I think that's one of those gameplay things that I think people, you know, it's easy to get frustrated and say, this, this sucks, why can't I shoot enemies? But um, if you jump, you can actually. You can get pretty good at it. Um, but yeah, okay. So uh, there will be a, there will be a ground attack tower as well. So I mean, if you no, if you don't learn how to jump and do that, um, you will discover that you can use towers to do that. Uh, there was also the uh, the idea of having an actual melee attack, so like a sword or something like that. And I may still do it. Um, you know where I don't. There was something where, you know, if you'd like double tap forward or something like that, you'd do like a dash attack and you could sort of like blast through enemies and stuff. Um, so, okay, what are we doing here? Okay, all right. Flame with rapid charge damage, as Satoshi's saying. Or rapid chip damage. I don't really know what that means. One could slow enemies. You guys are going to be see some real shit this this Friday. Um, I got this is just t the tip of the iceberg here. Um, so bombs anywhere. Um, of course, on Saturday I was working on artwork for new UFOs. Um, if you notice this beautiful this beautiful woman right here, uh, she's actually new. Um, this the mechanics of the UFOs are still the same and and will continue to you know function the same as you're used to, but. Now there should be a couple different types of uh, just visual appearances. You know, you've got we've got the girls, we've got the eyes, then we've got this old man. Looks like a, I can't remember who said it was looking like a like a Mr. Burns from Simpsons uh, alien. So yeah, we've got a couple different a couple different alien types or UFO types now. So it should get a little bit more variety uh, for what comes out since these guys are so common. Um, alright, so there's that. What, what time? We're 10 minutes in. We're, the one thing that I've been working on the most the past week is... You will be happy to know that the pets are almost done. There are six, six pets in the game. And um, I've pretty much programmed all of them except for one. So I can actually start to show you... Nice. It was Dare who's credited for uh, naming the the Mr. Burns aliens. So let's show you guys some of these pets. Um, right now I got... Um, I figured for the stream I was actually going to spend most of the time... It was a lot of fun to, to draw. Um, it was a lot of fun to draw on Saturday. I was just sort of hanging out and drawing and just doing that and you know checking up on the stream and I was I don't even know if I had the mic on I think I was just chatting with text while I was working um, it was nice and calm and soothing and relaxing and uh, so I'm just gonna do that again today I'm gonna draw a bunch of stuff I'm gonna draw all the pets um, hopefully let's see if, see if we can get them all done in like the, the hour or whatever that I devote to it but uh, let's show you what the pets actually do so I got a couple shortcut keys that'll, um... Okay, so this is the one pet, unfortunately, that I have not yet programmed, uh, but he's gonna be a, sort of an alien guy. He follows me around the same as the dragon does, but, uh, what he's gonna do... Just shoot out and grab gems so that I don't have to. Um, he just, if he sees a gem, he's gonna go touch it, collect it for me, and, uh, then that's that. I got, I got the gems. So I don't really have to focus, if I've got this pet with me, I don't have to worry about collecting gems and diamonds and stuff. He'll do it. He'll do it all for me. Who else do we got here? Pets. Um, let's see. We got the dragon. You guys have seen, so I'm not even going to bother with the dragon. He hasn't changed one bit. Um, there's going to be a monkey. There's going to be a monkey pet. And uh, I'll show you what I'm... This is roughly what things are going to be looking like. Ignore this top row here. There's a robot pet. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse. You probably can't. That's okay. There's a robot pet in the upper left there. 
Um, I'll tweak him. Uh, there's the monkey right at the bottom left. Um, he's going to be a cool little monkey. Uh, he, the monkey finishes your plants, which is pretty awesome because you can have, uh, basically you could be building two plants at once. Um, you, uh, you plant a seed and you don't have to devote any time to it. You just go off and start planting another seed. And if the monkey overlaps that plant, um, he will start to build it for you and he'll, he'll fill that plant up to the first level so that it starts to grow on its own. Um, the turtle, um, we've got, uh, this is Pop's interdimensional turtle. What he's going to do is uh, shoot out these sort of warp things, these interdimensional portals. I was thinking of going with a shield, but we have a shield tower already. Um, I didn't want to have like a bunch of shieldy type stuff, um, basically stopping all the bullets. So the turtle, it's sort of like a shield. Um, but basically what it does is, uh, it's like a portal that spins, and you'll see it, I got it all done. So, it's a portal that spins, and anything that touches the portal slows down to like a, a snail's pace, including bullets. So basically, um, it's almost like a shield in the way it gives you a chance to kind of finish what you're doing and or get out of the way. Um, and then the bullet sort of slowly passes through this vortex, and then once it reaches the other side of the vortex, it, it uh resumes its normal speed. Mike Wazowski. Nice. Yeah, the eye, the eyeball guy. Does Mike Wazowski have horns? I hope not. I hope I'm not too close to... I'm always concerned that I'm getting too close to something that maybe I was influenced by. Uh, Mike Wazow... I don't know how to spell his name. Wazowski. This should be close enough. Oh, he does have horns, for shit's sake. Okay. Well, that's okay. This guy was, uh, you know, we'll figure that out. Um, the cat. This is cute little kitten. This sort of just, just cutely little jumps around and follows you. And, uh, and then if it touches an enemy, it, it chomps the shit out of it. It just bites it and, and, you know, just causes severe damage to the enemy. And usually two or three bites and it'll kill the enemy. So it's kind of cool. It let's, uh, it's a ground, it's like a ground attack. Um, thing so it can't really attack things that are in the air but uh, any of the aliens that are walking around on the any of the aliens that are walking around on the planet it'll attack them and kill them what else is there uh, so the robot shoots out lasers so I'm just gonna show you these uh, all this all this talk let's just show you let's just show you what these guys do so we got the monkey this is the Brave little toaster, nice. Okay, so the egg should spawn a robot. Now. Yeah, so Atoshi, I was, my original plan was definitely to have the turtle act as a shield. Like it, um, yeah, it would like sort of protects it with his shell. But then um, I figured with the, with the portal, and then plus this is a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a thank you to Pop, um, who's, I don't know if he's on the chat today, but um, he was, uh, I don't see him on there. Um, Pop ha really loves his, I think he was sort of involved in the in the creation of the interdimensional space turtle, and uh, Pop wanted his power to be something regarding a, a portal. So I figured sort of like a, it works like a shield in a way, because uh, it technically protects you from a bullet for a second. Okay, so this is the monkey. He obviously is just a placeholder right now. Um, he will look like the monkey that you just saw in the, the sketch. But uh, yeah, he's just sort of like a little guy. He, uh, he just sort of wanders around on the planet and just sort of does his own thing. But if he comes into a plant, that's, he'll actually work on the plant for you and bring it to completion. I'll have to fix the... There you go. So he finished the plant for me. I didn't have to do a damn thing. So that's pretty cool. And uh, if you hop off into space, the monkey jumps onto your back and he travels with you to the next planet. He doesn't do anything while he's hanging out with you. Uh, and then you uh, hop down onto the next planet and he hops down and he's such a good, he's such a good monkey. He just hangs out and he just, uh, yeah, he just does some stuff. You can give him a bunch of work to do while you're fighting off enemies. 
takes a little bit. I think it takes a little bit longer for him to finish the plants than it does for you. Um, but actually, I did speed up the default um, planting speed also just a little bit. Um, so it's just kind of cool. Um, cute little monkey. Good times. Okay, so yeah, the monkey will will he'll look cool um, when I finish his artwork. What else do we got here? The cat. Show you guys what the cat does. <laughs> he doesn't do it. Ace of Fire says he doesn't do anything when he's hanging out with you. Sounds like the Cosmocoria broadcasts. Oh well, yeah. There you go. You guys are awesome. There's no way I could say that because, you know, it's just inspiring to be here with you guys and, uh, you know, just to have... So here's the cat. Same sort of basic move mechanics. It just sort of wanders around. Um, it'll, look, it'll look cute when it's, you know, it'll look cute when it's all drawn up. But basically the cat is a little ground attack beast. Like it just, it just destroys, it just destroys things. It just eats them. Good stuff. Good cat. Good cat. So yeah, that's the cat. He'll look cute when he's... Because it'll be like this cute little... Cute little pink cat. And then it just demolishes. It'll look pretty funny. Turtle. Let's check out what this turtle does. So the turtles... It's going to look a little weird because it's all placeholder art. Um, the turtle looks the most um, ridiculous right now because it's just a square with like a little it's it's just a little it's just a little stupid thing uh, so there's the turtle he follows you around like a floating turtle okay perfect um, if you see um, So he builds these little portal things, and the portal things cause sort of time distortion. See that bullet? It's like traveling through. I think the UFOs are unaffected right now, but that they will be. So the turtle puts these these portals out that distort the time. See this bullet is taking longer to reach me. So it almost acts like a shield in a way. Um, because, you know, I can still get out of the way, or it doesn't affect me at all, it just affects the enemies. Of course, the, the actual appearance of it will look cooler, and it'll be more like a spirally kind of vortex thing. And then also these guys will, will be affected by it as well. Um, uh, pro pro probably even bosses, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, this is the one thing I need to figure out, is because the, um, the he's making a shitload of these portals, is that really what we want? I'll figure this out. Cat Earthquake would be nice since he's stomping up and down. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, actually. Okay, so yeah, the per turtles are cool. Shooting bullets. Good times. Okay, I'll, f I'll tweak it. It'll look better with the art and all that kind of stuff. Uh... Next we've got the robots, and again, this is just, it's all placeholder shit. Uh, it's gonna look so cool once I've got all the pets drawn up and actually placed in there. But it's funny because it's like, it's, depending on how long this takes, this may be something I, you know, I was hoping I'd be able to get at least some of it done today. But all the technical, a lot of the technical stuff is done, I just need to swap out the placeholder art with the actual art. Okay, so this is the robot. Robot's pretty cool. Um, sort of like the dragon. Um, he shoots out these fucking gangster lasers. You just saw what he was doing there. Um, the cool thing is the, laser, the lasers that he shoots out actually ricochet off the planets as well. And they, and they um, penetrate. So <laughs> he's, I don't know man, he's pretty powerful. He, he might be a little too powerful. He just, you know, do I even need to fight at this point? Pretty cool. I love this guy the most, I think. And just the whole ricochet thing is really enjoyable to watch. 
especially when it's just like maybe I'll have like a cooldown where he can shoot like you know five bullets and then he's uh and then it sort of he heats up or something like that so he's not too strong and then he has a bit of a cooldown thing where he's got to wait before he can shoot five more bullets or something I just love that guy he's gonna he's gonna be pretty cool Bam. so yeah so there's that gangster robot RP17000. How's it going, man? It's a new... I don't know if I've seen you in here before. So huge love. Welcome. Uh, one more pet to show you guys. You can, oh, wait. What's Dare saying? It would be cool if the brave little toaster puts enemies on fire with the toast. <laughs> nice. That would be... No, I mean... Yeah, I'm... They're, cl they're close to being done. I'm not going to be changing their mechanics too much. I've been working my ass off to get this stuff set up, so I think I'm pretty happy with sort of how everything's set up. If anything, it's just going to be balancing. So like Dare's saying, uh, two shots reload or four shots reload. I think it's going to be something like that where, you know, he pew pew pews and then, and then there's a little bit of a delay and then a pew pew pew. This is the uh, last pet here. And it is a puppy that just follows me around, just like a little puppy would. You can, it's funny because you can actually like kind of get out of his view and he'll lose you. And then he like, remember, he finds you and like tries to catch up. <laughs> it's just fun to sort of outrun the puppy. Oh, you little, you little scamp. Oh, you little scamper. And uh, the cool thing about the puppy, his power, I mean, ultimately, I was going to just leave it as, uh, I was actually, wasn't even going to have a puppy in there, but um, I was sort of finished doing with the other guys, and then I was sitting down, and I felt kind of bad because um, I've got a, I've got a little puppy named Dora, and uh, I was just playing with her and, and loving her, and uh, I was like, why, I gotta put Dora in this game, and I was just gonna have, um, I was just gonna have her follow you around, and that was all she was, that was all she was good for, is just a friend. And uh, I thought it would be pretty cute, but then I was like, "Well, no, let's have let's have something, let's have something happen." So when Dora gets close, she licks you and heals you just a tiny, tiny little bit. If you watch your, if you watch the health going up, I think like every maybe every like three seconds it goes up like one one point. So I mean, to actually get healed by her isn't very effective like you would really it'd be a little bit tedious but just just the love you know just look at that just looking maybe a little perverted there but oh you know what that's actually another thing that I was thinking of as well um, because there are going to be uh, let's see I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just I'm missing some of the stream here yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dare, no toast. Um, NRP seventeen thousand. Yeah, sweet that you're sweet that you're here now. Like, I'm glad, I'm glad you came back for another, another, another exploration of this just retarded osity of that happens on Friday. Um, and Atoshi's saying it would be nice if the dog did search out items and distract the enemy or something. I was actually thinking, um, because there, I've talked a bit about this on other streams, there's going to be items on planets um, that you can only uncover. They're, they're basically completely hidden. They're 100% hidden. Um, and you bend down to, until you bend down to plant. And when you bend down to plant, which is the same key or the button as uh, bending down to pick something up, like if there was an egg or something there. So if there was an egg on the ground, I would bend down to pick it up. Um, so the only the only sort of clue that you would have is you'd bend down to plant or to build a base or something like that. And lo and behold, you would actually grab an item. So to find these items, you would basically have to walk around the planet like this, like. It, they're meant to be random, like they're meant to be, so you stumble across them. Um, so, yeah, I think a cool thing for the puppy would be is if the puppy comes across it, because the puppy's sort of just wandering, wandering around. But if the puppy 
sniffs it out, then it would stick where it is and it would sort of just let you know that there's something there. I mean, it doesn't even need to uncover it, just to have the puppy, you know, right now the puppy's following me around, just to have the puppy stop in one spot and not follow me around it would be a good clue that there's actually something there to dig up. And then I could just go over to where the puppy's standing and uh, dig, and then there's a thing. Ace of Fire, uh, there, you can use a gamepad for, for most for most things. Um, the only thing that you can't really do right now is uh, select all the items on the menu right here, which is something that I'm basically, uh, I still have to program. So, but I mean, you can you can jump around and shoot and jetpack and, and, and play like that. And it does work with the gamepad right now. So you can check it out. Uh, yo, Jarenek, how's it going? Man, it's just awesome. It's like a, it's like a greatest hits in here. All my friends. Um, I didn't even know you were here, dude. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're not already gone, but uh, yeah, huge love. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, and RP 17,000 is funny because yeah, I wanted the, I wanted Dora to just stand there and bark. I totally wanted her to just bark and have no effect with the bark. Just, just follow me around and bark. That was ultimately, that was actually a joke that I specifically said to my wife. Um, all my friends. <laughs> yeah, so this is, that's the pets. No, you guys are pals. Um, you may be you may be fans of what I'm working on, but uh, you know it's that makes you a friend of mine. So this, yeah, that's the pets. That's really what I've been working on. The new artwork for the UFOs. I've been working on the tower, the new menu for the towers, the new options to be able to drop your bombs whenever, um, the new pet types. So they're all kind of ready to go. And uh, I think that's it. I mean, there's been changes sort of throughout everything. Um, I got a whole page of notes here of stuff scratched off that I've been working on all week, but that's the most important, that's the most interesting stuff. So that's, um, that's where we're at. So I think the next big thing will be, uh, let's get the pet art finished up and, and add it on there. Um, actually, this may be a bummer to some, but, um, I was actually thinking and I hate to say this because I know we, we did talk about it a bit, but I think it makes a lot more sense to me um, for a couple reasons. But uh, for a philosophical reason, um, I think the pets are going to be non uh, sort of storable. There's not going to be a. You're not going to be able to go start a game with a pet. And I think uh, part of the reason is because they the powers are fairly. Um, the powers are fairly intense, um, especially when we're looking at like the robot, robot and stuff like that. Um, I think I don't know what am I trying to say. I think the discovery and the unknowing of what pet you're going to get adds a lot of um, sort of psychological element to the game and a, a lot more of a it changes the way each time you play will actually be. I mean, that way you never start with a pet, so there is always that um, there's always that aspect of do you want to search for it? Because you every game will have an egg in it. Um, where that egg is is never going to be in the same place, um, but there will always be an egg in there. So you could technically start your game off by searching the universe for that egg. And uh, but then the question is, what's in the egg? And uh, and then ultimately what you find in the egg may adjust how you play that session so if it's something that's um you know if you get the the robot that shoots lasers or you get the dragon or something like that that's um relatively you know good at offense you may want to sort of go for like a attacking all the bosses kind of thing um if you end up finding the puppy then maybe you don't want to even you don't want to focus on getting far but you want to just do an exploration run and uh, use that puppy now that you have and start searching for secret items and um, start searching for like costumes and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of changes that way. You don't you don't plan what you're gonna do. Um, it sort of it, 
it's sort of a surprise and I think it just it'll add it'll add something to the the variety of the game and also um, maybe you know it's just a little bit more of a you won't take things for granted I think as much I think the thing is if you find all the if you find all the eggs and you find all the pets and then you have this menu where you can choose the pet um, that you want to go in with I have this feeling that you'd always choose the same one um, you would find the pet that you like the best that seems to be the most beneficial to your playing style and you just always use that one pet and the other ones just sort of never get used um, and exactly what uh, Acorns EA is saying on the chat um, in Castle Crashers I had fun collecting the pets but I never used them and I think that I'm in the exact same way I mean I use the I would just choose the giraffe when it came down to it because the giraffe let me level up my, my guy faster but I think I think being given a pet sort of randomly um, adds to the fun I think it'll I don't think it'll be more fun so that's that that is that um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna save it I'm not even gonna Now the majority of the rest of the stream, yeah, giraffe is is really the best pet. I agree because um Oh, yeah, Toshi, the 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 sun showing the pet silhouette that um yes, that's something that I do have in mind and it's on my it's on my list of like polish and, you know, good things to do. It's just a matter of I don't know if it'll make the official launch it will be maybe not tricky but I just there's just so much to do where's my where is that list if you guys saw this crap this crap shod like organization method I just have this one sort of daytimer book that has everything in it yeah it's on there Okay, rock on. Let's make some let's make some pet art. It's funny because um, if we're talking about Castle Crashers and the pets, there's one pet on there that I same reason I always use the same pet because uh, the giraffe lets you lets your character level up faster. So it obviously seemed to be the most long term useful because um, obviously then your uh, then your the ability that the pet grants you is it permanently affects your character um, you're technically leveling up twice as fast um, but there was one pet on there I think it was the Yeti um, that attacks enemies that are near death it attacks enemies or friends that are near death and um, I took it for granted thinking okay well yeah sure kill some enemies that are near death but one time um, I was playing with my son and he had that pet and we were fighting the last boss, and we were so close to killing the last boss, and the Yeti just went and wiped out the boss. Like, he had, like, easily another five minutes worth of attacking left on him. But because we had that pet, it just totally wiped him out. It killed him, like, in one hit. So, yeah, there's, uh... I think there was some, you know, like, some hidden... Some hidden bonuses that, uh... You know, benefits to using some of those pets that, uh just got you know taken for granted because we just never use them yeah but castle crash is such a good game i'm surprised they haven't made a sequel i don't even know if those guys what else they're working on if, if anything played with friends so if I didn't, this is a you said I get left behind level wise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that damn giraffe. Now I'm going to get into like the. Now I'm going to get into like the, the quiet, quiet Nate. Um, later on in the stream, I'm going to be doing, uh, as we start getting, as we get the work done, I think once the pens are all drawn up, um, I'm going to have another quick session of uh, the forest, 
um, if you guys are tuned in last weekend. See, this is, I'm already, I'm not digging what's going on there. Um, if you guys are tuned into the stream last week, I played The Forest and it was ridiculous. But uh, this week, um, Dare has, has honorably offered to guide me. I don't know how that's going to work because he's going to be seeing sort of like a 20 second delay of whatever I'm seeing. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be very guidey, I think. Yeah, I loaded up, um, I loaded up Strife the other day. Um, I was in there. And I started playing the tutorial where you play as like the uh, the pirate chick, and it was yeah, it was also fun. It was reminding me of playing like Torchlight or something, because it was like still a one player aspect of it. Um, yeah, I could probably play some Strife. I would actually prefer I would prefer to play Strife uh, because it's Mac native, um, the version that I got. Whereas um, if I play The boob pirate. Yeah, I, yo, Dare, let's play. Let's play Strife for our once we're all done our work. Um, because uh, yeah, I think the force the force is cool, but um, it ran so bad last week. Um, I wasn't expecting it to actually be very. It's not going to be any better today. Um, and there's nothing worse than, you know, some slow running slow-running game. Uh, I'm going to close some of these apps. But yeah, we can do like Uh, Ace of Fire, I have, I have no experience. Um, I don't even know. Is it? Do you pronounce it MOBAs or is it? Um, yeah, I've n zero experience um, playing that kind of game. Uh, zero experience. So, not, uh, not pro at all. Um, not even very good at like Warcraft. You know, not even very good at like. The closest thing that I ever really played is some Warcraft 2 custom maps with a friend. Uh, but yeah. And Atoshi, yeah, I was playing some games on uh, both Monday I played a little bit and uh, on Wednesday I played a little bit as well. And it's pretty fun. I like, I like having a little session. I like having a little session midweek. I don't even remember what I played. No, I know, uh, sorry, I know Warcraft isn't a, Warcraft isn't a MOBA, but I think, didn't, didn't that, isn't that where they sort of originated, um, you know, on, like, custom Warcraft maps, like, um, isn't that how that all started, sort of, like, Warcraft 2 maps and stuff, where, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong.
I'm not feeling as fast today. It's one thing I fucking hate in Photoshop is converting the points. It never works the way that I want it to. Not Photoshop and Illustrator. I don't know, maybe I just don't know what I'm doing when it comes to that. Okay, monkey. Yo, Dare, what's going on? I didn't scrap any sessions, yo. Um, if there's... Or are you talking about Den? Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff that happened last week. Uh, I haven't gone through and sort of saved the recordings. Hopefully it's not too late. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to say, um, it has been crazy inspiring uh, to to see you guys doing stuff. Um, we've got uh, Den is Den uh, Den Rocks is starting a YouTube channel uh, now. I can't remember what it's called for some shitty reason. Den is starting a YouTube channel. Um, Dare is starting a YouTube channel. Um, Jess is starting a blog. She started a blog and has got some uh, some creative writing already up on there. Uh, it's super awesome and inspiring to just to be, you know, hearing about this stuff and to follow and be checking it out and, and following what you guys are doing. And uh, yeah, I'm just just honored to kind of be part of this this family of creation that's happening um you know it feels like we're we're all doing some doing some stuff and changing the world a little bit at a time and uh yeah it's really cool um so yeah thank you for for i guess just sharing what you guys are doing with the world it's the meal ticket That's honestly as complicated as I wanted it to get with this little monkey. Um, then he needs a he needs something so when he's actually working on the plant, what does he look like? I think it's even if he's just looking down at the plant. Super cool stuff. Acorns yay, like um Acorns Yay is saying in the in the chat uh, that eventually she'd like to learn how to make games too, but one step at a time. Um Yeah man. I was there for, for far too long and uh I think people are surprised to learn that um really you know I've been working on stuff I've been working on sort of learning Construct 2, which is what I'm using to make Cosmocoria. I've been, you know, twiddling around in it for the past couple couple years and sort of just following what people are, you know, problems people have on the forums and, uh, you know, how, how they're resolving those problems. Um, so I've been doing that for the past couple years, but um, really Cosmocoria started sort of just on a whim, like it was just going to be a, a quick project. Uh, and I just sort of decided, okay, well, I'm going to take the knowledge that I've sort of gained the past couple of years, and I mean, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a professional in any sense of the word, um, but 
really just try to kind of use what I learned and, and start to sort of build something out of it. And that's kind of how it all that's how it all started. And it was really just one step at a time, just doing it really. Um, the only difference between what I was doing to make Cosmicoria and what I was doing leading up to trying to make Cosmicoria was that I was just actually trying to do it. And it sounds retarded, but the same thoughts are going through my head. Um, I don't know anything more than I knew. Um, I, I, well, I get, now I do because you know I had to teach myself sort of how to do certain things. As but I think just working on a project, especially if it's something that you enjoy, uh, it gets you to the point where you're sort of teaching yourself how to move to the next step. And I think a lot of the a lot of the hurdles that people have with doing something like starting up a you know starting up a website or or a live stream or or making a game or doing a youtube video channel or or doing like a like a public display of your artwork or there's so many things that you can do but i think a lot of the fear and hesitation comes from it seems very overwhelming to actually do that kind of thing because all you're thinking about is all the work that it would actually take or what would be required to do it from scratch like you know you don't know if I was gonna do like a, a live video stream or a live YouTube channel like I don't you know I'd have to know how to make a graphic for my for my title page and I'd have to do all the stuff that I may not know how to do and uh, it seems overwhelming and daunting and but if you don't think of it like that and you just think of it as one thing at a time um, I think it becomes way more manageable and way more easy like um, because then you're not really at a, you don't have a time limit um, if you think of what needs to happen to make something happen um, and then break it down into s tiny little steps that you can actually make it uh, not happen all at once because of course it's not going to but if all I'm thinking about to make Cosmicoria is uh, how to make a guy walk around on a planet and not fall off. And that was step one. And I just learned how to do that. And then I was like, okay, well, how do I make a guy jetpack off into space now? And it sort of switches gameplay mode from like walking platform style to like jetpacking style and it just you know it took me like a week to sort of learn how to just do that one little thing but by the time the week was done and I learned how to do it now all of a sudden I had some sort of simple gameplay mechanic but I think if it's just people I think you have to just get over that fear that something is going to be hard and then once you get over that fear you can just focus on what you actually have to do. Fuck is that? 
Good times. Good times. Should be using wider space. It's all good. It's all good. Fucking snapping is driving me nuts. If I could remember how to do like masks and shit. Cosmic Ray Friday broadcast where you guys can listen to me ramble while I work. And I'm missing the whole chat and I'm feeling bummed out by that.
Oh, that album ending is marking the one hour. <laughs> I honestly thought at this point I would have all the pets drawn. That was my that was my goal. That's not the case. Um, well, guys, let's throw on another album. Should I just keep working? I should really go back and read some of this chat because I want to be involved. Let me go back. I'm going to bring it into this window here. Oh man, there's just so much. Okay. Okay, you guys are talking about Den's channel. Nice. Okay. So yeah, there was a lot covered there. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. Um, to it probably depends on your style of learning. Um, if you're, I, I personally learn a lot better when I'm working on something specific as opposed to just learning theory and stuff like that. I was never good in math once I hit a certain point because the math was all, you know, just letters and algebra and it didn't really have any context, so it was really hard for me to sort of understand a real-life meaning or use for it. And once I didn't have that real-life use, uh, it was a pain in the ass to learn. The things I've always learned best are the things that uh, I learned for a specific purpose. So that definitely applies to Cosmicory, where I'm learning, uh, learning things. I'm learning how to do things because I sort of want. I don't know. I want to do them. A good example is the pets. How the pets sort of look at you, depending on which way you're facing or where you are or where the pet is in relation to you. It took me a long time to sort of understand how to get a pet that would actually look in your direction um, based on where he is because uh, because the whole arbitrary X and Y thing I think we've talked about this on a past stream yeah it took a long time to sort of learn and sort of understand what what had to be done to make that happen and you know if, if I I didn't have the knowledge leap going into it for sure, but now I sort of understand a use for using angles and and all that kind of stuff and calculating sort of position based on angles and things. So yeah, learning. If you're if you're passionate about something, uh, I've encountered so many times people. Uh, people who say they want to do something like I want to DJ or I want to oh man it'd be so cool if I knew how to do this or it'd be oh I, oh I wish I knew how to do that I wish I knew how to draw like honestly if you wish you knew how to do something like how much do you actually wish 
that you knew how to do it because you could just do it. You could just teach yourself how to do it. If you actually truly want to do something like that, there's literally, I mean, barring like a severe like mental or, or physical handicap, there's no, there's nothing really stopping you from learning how to do something. We have such a crazy amount of resources available to us. You know, you don't have to go to school to learn how to do this kind of shit or to do, or to do. You just have to, really all it comes down to is you just have to have the passion to want to learn how to do it. And if you have the passion to want to learn how to do it, you'll figure out a way. You know, you got DJs who started off making mixtapes um, just by holding up tapes to another tape player. You know, they didn't have equipment or fancy, you know, fancy recording equipment and they just held up their music to a tape player and hit record and then held up the next song. And you know, I had friends who told me about their early productions involved, their early like beat productions involved literally like cutting up tape, like literally cutting up cassette tape tape and reassembling it to make a beat and the only thing the only thing that brings you to a point of doing something like that is how much you love to actually just experiment and try and do and do something with it and you'll just do it you'll find a way to to make something happen but then you get other guys who say oh i wish i you know oh i want i really wish i could dj but you know i, I can't afford tables or I can't afford a good mixer. It's like, come on. I remember when I was trying to learn how to scratch and I had some like $5 like shit ass turntable from Value Village that was like, it's from, you know, like a thrift store, just a crappy broken turntable. And I was like cutting with the volume knob on the, on the turntable and trying to learn how to scratch on top of the thing. Like it didn't have like the proper weights or the proper outputs. It was all just one big unit with a speaker on it and you know, I just wanted to learn how to scratch. I wanted to, I wanted to be able to make that sound, and I didn't let my, you know, my lack. I was in high school at the time. I didn't let my lack of money or, or anything like that, stop me from just trying to make those sounds. You just gotta find a way to do what you want to do. If you want a drum and you can't afford drums, I'm, you know, you may be able to afford some five dollar drum sticks and get some buckets and. Like, just fucking drum if you want to drum. I think people come up with, like, ways to stop themselves from doing things. Because maybe deep down they, they think that they'd be bad at it or... You know, they think that, you know, maybe it'll, it'll be too much work to actually learn how to do something. So it's easy to come up with an, ex with an excuse as to why we can't do something as opposed to actually just, I don't know, just do it. Just, you just have to do it. But it really just, just takes being honest. Maybe you don't really want to know how to do it. I've wanted to teach myself how to play guitar since I was like 15. I'm now 33 and I still don't know how to play guitar. I like playing around on it, but I just can't, I just don't enjoy sitting down to learn chords and like, it's just not, it's not enjoyable to me to the, the process of learning how to play guitar. And really when it comes down to it, as much as I say, you know, I wish I knew how to play guitar, really I don't. If I was honest with myself, I don't, you know, yeah, sure it would be nice to know how to play guitar, but I don't enjoy putting in the work. So no, I'm probably not going to learn how to play guitar. So I just got to be honest with myself, playing guitar is just not something that I'm probably going to do. No point in, no point in wishing. The best thing about this turtle is he's going to be like just floating around for no reason. He has no jetpack or he's got nothing that causes him to float. He's just gonna float.
Satoshi saying, yeah, there's, oh, there's so much good stuff in here. I'm just rambling on, but you guys are having a discussion about it. Yeah, Miota, do or don't, there is no try. Daryl says, if money wasn't an object, what would I do? Or, uh, I'm assuming what he's saying, what would you do to people in, in the chat? But I'm going to... If money wasn't an object, what would you do? For me... Like, I like making shit. I just like making shit. I've always made shit. If you look at some of my... I just always made shit. I like making stuff like, I like making it cool too. Like I like making physical, physical things. And I think I would, if I had unlimited money, I would probably like open up a store and just like create things for that store and just hang out in the store and just like work on new things and just be like a, just this weird guy that just sits in a store and works on stuff and then has it for sale games shirts toys just stuff this weird stuff music I don't know if this turtle is good. How was I? What was the? What was my original art like? Oh, now my. He does have eyes. Okay, and he's got little sort of chest chunks. I think the glasses are wrong. I need them more forward. Nice, RP17000 says he should have a little propeller for his shell. That's probably a good idea. off his tummy. This is crazy. Acorns is talking about something that's really interesting. I want to read up on it. Programming seems like the kind of thing that other people are supposed to do, not for weird girls, but I used to do it all the time, so why not? Yeah. Oh my, I think I skipped two. I skipped wrong. Plus, all these high schoolers are making a game on Kickstarter. <laughs> well, not gender stereotyping. Yeah, I think if you're talking about, like, it's ha like you, you got a you got an unattach image i think like i have no idea how you guys see me but i have a 100% guarantee it's not how i see myself i don't think i'm i don't think of myself as the type of guy who would make a video game or who and like we're getting into sort of some sort of deeper self-analysis type stuff here, but 
um, I don't know, like I think, like this game is, this game feels like, this game and the type of work feels like the most representative of who I am I've probably ever experienced in terms of work. Um, it's the most, you know, non-jobish sort of expression of my thoughts and, and that kind of thing. But at the same time, in terms of my personality or who, who I see myself as, you know, I don't... It surprises me that this is what I'm doing right now. And and that, you know, Kickstarter, like, that the people have, have believed in what I sort of presented to them and, and you guys are sort of supporting me. And, and just the fact that you guys are here right now is just... I mean, if we're going to get emotional about it, yeah, that's Ed Blocker. Um, you know, if I'm going to get emotional about it, like, it's just... Like, you guys are giving this whole... Like, you guys are building this image of, of myself. Like, you guys are helping shape how I see myself in a way by sort of approving of or disapproving of certain things that I do. And, I mean, just the game itself you know I work on Cosmochoria since last November it was nothing in October and it was something by the end of November and it was something bigger at the end of December but I mean before all that happened I was just a guy who had finally you know felt like I would wasted enough time wishing I could make a game and reading about developers on indiegames.com and and all that kind of thing like feeling like maybe maybe I should just do something and stop stressing so much about whether or not whether or not it was something that I was not even just capable of but something that I was like worthy of and I still don't really consider myself to be a game developer. I might call myself that on like a Twitter bio or something like that, but I don't think of myself... I mean, from a technical standpoint, I think, yeah, okay, I'm a game developer, but I'm just a guy trying to make this game. And it's such an honor and blessing to have attention from, from you guys and to have your support and, and friendship. To, sh to sort of work with me on this and to sort of show me if I'm I guess to kind of prove to me that I'm maybe on the right track or that maybe I should just keep working on it like it's inspirational to have it's inspirational to have your just to have you here it sh shows me that maybe it was like a you know maybe I should just keep trying and keep working harder so it's cool I never had that to this degree. I worked on music my whole life, like since high school. I was working on making my own music and you know, I started up a record label and, and was just trying to get known for being like a musician and, and you know, I'd do live performances and I'd always have friends support me and you know, people say that I made cool music or that they liked what I was doing. But at the same time, you know, I wasn't getting anywhere with it. So you have this self-doubt that, like, maybe I'm just another one of those people that you see on, like, American Idol that, you know, I, their family must be telling them that they're, they're awesome because why else would you show up on American Idol to, like, make a fool of yourself? And that was always, I don't know, you know, it, it, that fear of making a fool of myself drives me to try harder and to do better before I present myself this in terms of something like you know if I just hit Kickstarter with um, you know just a sort of like a, a shitty write-up and like some shitty artwork and a shitty video like I know what that effect has when people if that's their impression so you know I worked really hard to kind of come up with a, an impressive um, you know impressive something to show an impressive game and that I, you know, I thought that it was, you know, at least I believed in it and, and I thought people might get into it. And I tried my hardest to make sure that the artwork was all there, um, you know, that people could visualize what I, what 
what my goal was and what it was all going to look like. How's this propeller going to move? I think if he just has... I think if it just looks like... I think if it rotates fast enough... Um, and what was I getting at? You know, there's a certain degree that you're you're in full control of people's in, uh, you're in full control of people's impression of you by what you present to them. And I could have, for fuck's sake, I could have chosen to not, I could have chosen to not launch the Kickstarter until I had done a bunch more work, or I could have chosen to have launched the Kickstarter and the game without doing a bunch of work. You know, I could have chosen to, I could have chosen to just sort of launch it, you know, six months ago before I had all the artwork done and before I had, you know, a, a playable demo and that kind of stuff. And that would have been entirely, you know, my choice. But um, I guess it's just from an awareness of what level things should be before you start to present yourself um, just by a, paying attention to how you feel when other people present themselves to you. Uh, if you come across a, an album, like a, you know, a music album, or you go to a live show, or you see somebody's artwork and you don't like it, does it inspire you to continue to pay attention to that, that person's work? And I've, from personal experience, I would say no. I would say when I my first impression isn't good, uh, I usually don't really care about making or following or paying attention to what they're next. Yeah, the, the turtle hovers. Yo, Bobo, how's it going? The turtle's going to hover constantly. <laughs> He's wearing Burberry. What's Ace playing? a bunch more stuff on the chat. They're saying that the first impression for Cosmoquery was fantastic. And I mean, that's, I mean, that's such a, a it's honestly, it's a relief to hear because that's all I really wanted. And, you know, I could have I could have shown it a lot sooner. But I was showing friends a lot sooner to try and see. And, and I was getting, you know, honest feedback from, from good friends and good family who, you know, who knew what they were talking about and, and were saying, you know, maybe you should work on it a little bit more before. And then, and then got it to a point where, okay, it was starting to look a little bit more like what I wanted and then started to branch out with who I was showing it to. And I think as it continued to work, as it continued to grow, it just became more clear that it was more ready for the next step of presentation. And it was always goals in the back of my mind. It's funny, I had this huge recording of myself making the plans of the Kickstarter before the Kickstarter ever... Oh, you know what would be weird? This is like... I should show you guys this. This is like revealing my soul. like revealing my soul I don't I really shouldn't but yeah let's do it <laughs> I'm nervous about this I'm really nervous about this I recorded myself planning mentally and preparing for I just hope I don't say something that is you know but I mean in, in the words of honesty this is, this is what I was thinking at the beginning of the year before... Oh, I'm so nervous about this. I shouldn't play it. I shouldn't play it. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna play it. 
I'm so nervous. What if I say something stupid or what if I say something hypocritical? Please, please understand that this is like a perfect example of I don't know what I'm doing. I got to express. Here you go, guys. This is I've grown since the, I've grown since this point. This was January 3rd, 2014. This was 9.55 at night. I was driving to Staples to grab myself a book, uh, an agenda. This agenda that I have in front of me right now that I've used since the beginning of the year to write down what I need to be doing each week to prepare Cosmicoria for every, to where it is right now. And so I don't know what I said. I know it's it'll be kind of cool to hear it, but I'm just worried that uh, I say something stupid or say something that I don't know if it's offensive or it's dumb or if it's short-sighted or selfish. I may say something. So this isn't. I'm just gonna play it first. All right. So first, I need to make sure that I have a list of goals that I want. And when I say a list of goals... Oh, that cancel? I don't know if that canceled or not. Okay, obviously it didn't. So I need a list of goals. And by goals, I mean obviously number one is I need money. Now, there's two ways that that could go... That that could, there's two ways that that could happen. One is I get the game done and get it, get it, you know, get it available, ready for sale, and then do the promotion. I don't know, I think either way that I choose, either route that I choose, money isn't going to be coming for at least a while. So I need to think about the other possible route. See, I'm just fucking rambling here because Okay, because the, the problem that I have is I need money. There's two ways. I could put the game for sale and try and sell it, and there's money. Alternate way is I do a Kickstarter. And I say, these are the costs. This is essentially, okay, and this is essentially covering the cost of development. And that is... literally the cost of my bills while I'm working on this thing because I'm not doing work work okay so the problem is with a Kickstarter you need to root back to the fact that you need to properly promote a Kickstarter and to properly promote a Kickstarter Technically, I have everything that I need, I think, at this point. Except for a community that I can draw... <clears throat> a community that I can draw on to support the Kickstarter. And I feel like in order to get the community to draw on to support the Kickstarter, that's already begun with setting up the IndieDB page and setting up the Greenlight page. So there's basically... You know, wheels in motion to try and build up that community at least a little bit from the start right now. So that's happening. That's got to keep happening. So now I need to think about that's the number one priority is to build that community. That should be my number one priority right now. So when I'm working on a calendar, my goals for this, for this coming, you know, m month, two months, needs to be goals related entirely on building that community, getting more people to the Steam page, getting more people to check out the game, and thinking of, now that I have that as the goal, thinking of things that I need to do to achieve that, and that's going to get into the marketing and the promotion type stuff, but not like, you know, that's, okay. It's going to get into the, the abstract stuff, too, because I need to make sure only some of it is going to come from the game, and I think 
so to get into the marketing and the promotion type stuff, I need to start thinking about what I want to present the game like, what image I want to sort of present at this point. And that's where I've been rushing. That's where I've been rushing in without thinking. I feel like I've just been wanting to get the green light page up and wanting to get the website up and wanting to get all these things, but I think I need to take a second to step back and think more and plan more about what image I'm trying to portray about the game because I'm losing touch with what my initial intentions were for presenting the game. I wanted it to be something that people explore and something that people discover the first time they play. But here I'm putting gameplay videos out that show the gameplay and spoil that immediately. What I need to do is fix that before it's too late and fix and present it more as a more subtly, I guess. I can show... Yeah, but do you really want people to be questioning? I think that's the bottom line, is I needed to... I needed to answer that problem for people because they were too confused anyway. I'm thinking about... The, what I'm thinking about is the fact that people who tried the game were having an issue figuring out what to do when they play the game and that so here I was wanting to here I was wanting people to discover how to play the game but I think if I'm going to be going if I'm going to be taking this for sale I need to be a little bit more clear on what it is you're supposed to be doing or do I? Fuck. I'm so confused. There's just so many, like, channels and thoughts running through my head of, like, different ways to do this and different, like, strategies on how I can present it. It's the whole reason why, like, things are rushed right now and I because I don't want to be caught again and again and again like I always am with overthinking how I need to present this to the point where I'm just sitting there with it sitting on my hard drive wondering how I'm going to present it and it's never actually being shown to anybody because I'm too hung up on that I need to just I need to take what I've done and refine refine the strategy so that it makes more sense and it's more focused on what image I want to portray so I'm not wasting any time in getting the page up and getting the, the thing written I can rewrite the thing. So I just need to I just need to think about what Let's go back. I need to think about what it is I need to focus on right now and I think right now I need to focus on building that community, making sure there's at least a handful of people there that I can say, "Okay, there's a Kickstarter. If you're interested in this game, you should totally do the Kickstarter." So then that means the next step will be to build that to build that Kickstarter. I said right there that I'm going for it. I think that's the most logical progression. Build the community, build the awareness for the project. Once I feel like there's people interested in it, and that's what does that mean? A hundred hundred followers what I need to do is look at look at Kickstarter uh, successful campaigns see what see what people see what people are doing okay and then okay so let's get back to building the community I mean that's the focus right now I need to build the community I need to get that awareness out so to get that awareness out I need to make sure that I have what I, do I want to have a playable alpha right now? Do I want the public to essentially begin scrutinizing the game? And I don't think I do. I think going off of the concept art and going off of gameplay videos and stuff like that is 
keeps me in a safe place so that I can keep control on who's actually playing it and what feedback I'm getting at this point. Stupid. If it, at least only to the point that it's actually keeping some of the mystique alive for people who like the way that it looks, because I think a large part of what the game is is going to be the way it looks. What I need to do is get get interested parties. That's gaming mag, like gaming sites and gaming blogs and gaming magazines, to be interested in it, so that they will write that it's under, you know, it's got a Kickstarter and it's underway, and we're doing, you know, it's actually going to happen. So what do I need to do to appeal to them so that they can promote it and get people clicking on the Kickstarter? Will that even help? So I need to explore this indie DB site a bit more. I need to explore Reddit a bit more. I need to kind of get... So over all the things that I need to do in the game, I need to make a list of things that I need to do outside of the game that have to do within major categories. That have to do with major categories like social media, promotion, planning. Fuck, there's just so goddamn fucking much to do. Like, this is. If I didn't want to do it so bad, this would be easy to let go. But. Like, I've never wanted anything more now career-wise or work-wise than to have this work out. And it's, I feel like, for once, it's 100% up to me and how much work I put, how much work I put into it. I can make this work. I can totally make this work. I just gotta do it. There you go guys, that was me, January 3rd of this year, doubting myself constantly, and not even knowing what to do, not even knowing where to start. So I mean, I think that's, I think that's, should be an inspirational because I still don't believe what happened. I still don't. And I think, yeah, I mean, obviously that stuff was... Um, that stuff was, you know, that was early thought. Some of those thoughts morphed and changed, and some of those thoughts grew into, into actions and tasks that I had to accomplish. And, I mean, obviously one of the biggest things, I was almost, almost sure that I didn't need a demo, but I... I think if I didn't have a demo, if I didn't have some way to show you guys how the game was going to play and all that, uh, I don't think it would have done as well. I know for a fact it wouldn't have. Because you can't, it, it just looked like a silly little naked dude. You know, it didn't, he wouldn't have gotten the, the gist. I think a lot of people were sold when they, they felt sort of how it felt to be that naked guy in space. Man, oh man, that's weird to hear. Thanks for, uh... <laughs> thanks for, you know, not judging me. Thanks for being here, guys. I didn't understand the power of what it was I was trying to build at the time. I still don't really... At the time, I thought I needed a community to sort of help me achieve my goals, but... I mean, with you guys here, you're what, you're what I was trying to work towards. But I didn't even realize what the actual value of it was, and the actual value of having you guys 
like to actually have you guys you know believe in me and to to share your own sort of successes and to to be inspired by each other i mean that's it's more than i ever really thought was even a thing i didn't even think that was a thing i've been i've sort of I, d I haven't even met you guys, and I feel like we're like a family of, of pals that, you know, just, we're just doing shit. We're just, you know, we're just, we're handling it. And whatever you guys are doing, like, um, you know, whether it be just making dinner for a loved one or, or working on some creative project or just... You know, spending time in the garden or the cutting the grass is like, it's surprising to know that we can do it as best as we can and it actually makes a difference to the world. Word up, Den. I should just throw this chat on here so you guys can see the awesome. You guys rock. <laughs> there was a philosophical thing that I mean, it's hinted at a lot and sort of covered in not necessarily mainstream thought, but um, it's something that I've slowly become more aware of or more, um, I guess, more attentive to. I have more belief in this concept that, uh, I mean, it, even from a scientific point of view, there isn't really much evidence pointing to what consciousness is. And by consciousness, I mean, you know, like, we're meat. We're a bunch of meat and blood and bones and muscle tissue and, and just organic matter. But why... Why do we think? And what gives us our, our self sort of expression and where does our... Where does our, our sense of self come from? Like, what does that originate from? And I've thought about this for a long time, and I used to sort of think, you know, I've, I've always sort of believed, just as a, even as a kid, that our mind is contained within our brains. But then, you know, listening to these sort of D these dudes on DMT trips and Joe Rogan talking about, you know, hallucinogens and going on these, like, you know, mind bender spiritual journeys and how uh, you sort of discover the, this universal consciousness or this, you feel part of this sort of awareness of, of things that are outside of your, out of your mind. But at the same time, you feel like you belong with them, or you belong to them, or they belong to you. But let's go back a second and look at back at the physiology of what we are. And you know, you start to you break down you break down our skin into cells, into atoms. To like, if you zoom in enough, there's nothing holding it all together. It seems. And, like, forgive my ignorance to anyone who's an actual, like, biologist or who, you know, understands this stuff, because I certainly don't. But from, from my understanding, there's an infinite, there's an infinite small, as my friends would put it. And uh, that infinite small means that our, our construction, 
you know, it's down to like a Futurama, a Futurama bit where you zoom in on a, you zoom in on a skin cell and continues onwards, and then that our atoms and molecular structure essentially becomes the the, the building blocks for an, another universe somewhere else where there should there could be somebody looking at their own their own hand wondering if there's anything deeper and i think that core structure of the universe which is infinite there's something there that is keeping that's weaving through everything whether it be an energy or some sort of a consciousness type thing and I think a lot of um, religions and stuff deal with it in the way of referring to it as God or there's like a deep spirituality in knowing that like the this like weave that sort of tying everything together is like a is like this universal force and I think I I don't believe in God in terms of like a, a bearded dude with sandals and, and a guy who got nailed to a cross and I don't really believe in all that but I think that there there's something to be said about consciousness originating from this source that we all sort of share and that sort of to the point where now getting back to the metaphysical aspect of it where maybe our bodies aren't containing our our thoughts maybe our thoughts exist on this plane this like universal plane maybe our thoughts are everywhere and we all share those thoughts and we can all tap into those that source and we're all sort of experiencing it in different ways i mean more creative people may have more of an abstract understanding of what it is and and what's being delivered by it and uh you know there's definitely evidence for some form of universal consciousness people thinking the same things at the same time i mean personally you know it, it may just be certainly coincidence but i've certainly experience the almost cliche of thinking of somebody and having the phone ring and it be them on the other end of the phone i mean that's it's easy to write that kind of stuff off as coincidence but there's a reason why it's a cliche and i think it's so common that that sort of thing is experienced by humans and then you start to look at animals who um, become visibly agitated or visibly excited on the there's no way they can see you. They've done like studies where they had like a camera on a dog or something like that. And the dog gets visibly agitated or excited as you arrive home. Not as you pull up to the driveway, but as you leave work, the dog becomes aware of that and, and begins to, you know, and it's not even like a timing thing. It's like, a you know, you're coming back from the grocery store at a, a time that it's not used to you being home at that it's just aware of your impending arrival i think animals aren't bogged down with self-identity and and all this shit that they're also able to tap into and or live within this this consciousness this stream of sort of energy and understanding of of i don't know how we all tap into the source blah 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 and it's like I don't know how do you there's you just it's a bummer because I don't I've always thought of religion as sort of like a cop-out where you just you know you can't explain something so therefore God must have done it but I think this other way of thinking the more I think about it the more I believe in it but um I think the bigger thing is when I talk to religious friends I'm blown away at the amount of similarities there actually are to what I believe with this kind of thing. This whole fucking tooth thing was a waste of my time. Uh, there's a there's a lot of similarity to what I what I believe in terms of this consciousness and this energy. 
and essentially what what religions just view as God. And that it may very well be the same thing if it even exists at all. And who's to say it even does? We're all part of the same we're all part of the same thing. Metaphorically or not. I mean it'd be pretty cool if it was all if it was biologically or actually like truly scientifically. This cat looks like it's just trying to like take a hard shit. It's got nails in it. Remember, lots of teeth is a problem for when it's small. No, I think I like this other one better. I think I like that. almost three o'clock. I haven't even played Strive yet. <laughs> Things are good. Working hard. It just doesn't look like he's biting. That's the problem. His mouth is the wrong shape. It looks like he's screaming or like giving birth to a young hippo. <clears throat> that one was more bitey. Shit. Yeah, I agree. That's a bummer. This is and you gotta open your mouth so therefore your head your lower jaw has to be open if you're gonna be biting so you need a bigger mouth but you need all your stuff to be packed up into the top of your head because you gotta open your mouth to bite I should play some Strife. I think uh, the stream probably won't go. If I don't do it now, I probably won't do it. So yeah, I should probably do it. Unless you guys just want me to draw and then sign off. Play some strife. Whoa, what's happening with this guy? <laughs> okay, let's play some strife. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna work on this. Uh, what do we do today? So I showed you guys all the stuff. I think the turtle's fairly close to being done. I'll probably tweak it. Uh, let's see. The cat is close. I just need to do the biting. The monkey. Did I do the monkey? Yeah, I did the monkey. He. That's his running around animation, but then also his working animation when he's planting the seeds. Uh, what else? So I didn't do the... So the, once I do the cat, then I just got to do the robot. 
the puppy, and then the alien. So that's not too bad. Two hours. Maybe a little slower. If I wasn't so focused on sharing my darkest personal recordings from earlier in the year. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do some, we're going to play some Strife, uh, and, uh, Dare is going to give me a call on the Skype machine, and, um, I'm just realizing how bad the frames are right now, and I don't understand why that is. Maybe it's because I'm rocking the full screen, so I'm going to open up. Strife. Yeah, word up. I mean, it was, you know, how, you know, it's hard to be, it's hard to be honest sometimes. But it's definitely worth it. And, you know, you get, you guys deserve to, you deserve it. It's the least I can, it's honestly the least I could do. And if it helps in any way, I mean, that's even better. So, huge love. Wow, that's just tripping balls. I don't know what's happening with the... Yo, Dare? Hello. How's it going, buddy? It's pretty good. How are you? I am A1. I'm trying to figure out what's uh, happening to the stream, though. I've muted the stream. Uh, okay, perfect. Um, I don't know why this is all... Hello. Yo, Hello. Ace. How's it going, buddy? I'm lousy. How'd you like that philosophical journey? My head hurts. I've, I've sent you an email about that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Let me just... Um, oh. Don't yeah. show the email on the stream. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll keep... I've got it. I've got it shut down just in case any any work comes well in. Well met. Each of our chosen boasts diverse skills okay. shaped by various pasts. To understand a fighter's strengths, you must understand their journey. Consider can I play without having... To, I didn't do Caprice's story. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. I can. Maybe I can invite you to lobby or something like that. Okay. The, her, I can start a lobby. Yeah, her story, story is pretty short. So. Jeez, I and it's really useful. Is it? To actually know you. We'll teach you. Okay, perfect. Um, I think this stream. I don't know. Are you? Uh, let's see. No, it's actually 